Hello, friends. We're going to be reading from uh, Stories Worth Rereading, published by AV Publishing and originally published by Review and Herald Publishing in 1913. So these stories go back quite a ways. The title of this story is Wanted, an Employer. It was first printed by Alice Louise Lee in Youth's Companion, used by permission in the book, that is. Wanted, an Employer. There was a northbound car temporarily disabled on Broadway near 4th Street, and in consequence, as far south as the eye could reach stood a row of motionless cars. Also in consequence, along the curb was ranged a fretting, impatient, helpless crowd, among whom the most anxious was probably Edward Billings Henry. In stature, Edward Billings Henry was briefer than his name would indicate, but to a certain two-room dwelling on Jackson Street, he made up in importance what he lacked in height, and it was his overwhelming sense of this importance which made him, which made every thin muscle taut and strained every nerve as he stood in the forefront of the crowd his bare feet planted on the cold asphalt, one hand gripping his remaining stock of papers, the other clutching a nickel. I never was in a tearing hurry in my life, but that this thing happened, exploded a man just behind the boy. Edward Billings Henry turned and looked up. The man was jingling a lot of loose coins in his pocket. The boy looked at his one nickel and said with conviction, You can't need to have him go like I do. The big man stared down at the little man in surprise with a gruff, Huh? But Edward Billings Henry had no time to repeat. His hope had revived. The two men who lay on their backs under the injured car began to crawl out and the boy pushed forward. Will it go now? he inquired of one of the numerous conductors clustered around. Maybe so, in half an hour, replied the conductor carelessly. <clears throat> oh, cried the boy in dismay. I just can't wait that long. Walk then, said the conductor crossly. It's too far, replied the boy, when you've got a stone toe. A what? ejaculated the conductor, but his voice was lost in the honk-honk of a big white touring car which pushed slowly through the crowd. In front of the car, Edward Billings Henry raced limpingly on his stone toe back to the curb and to the man jingling the coins in his pocket. Just what time is it, please, he asked. The man pulled out a watch and showed it to him. Edward Billings Henry heaved a great sigh. Half past ten. It'll likely be filled up before I can get there. What will be? The place I'm after. Skillfully, he raised the limping foot, laid it across the other leg, and nursed the stone-bruised big toe, his eyes on the automobile, which had halted almost in front of him. Hello, Junius, a voice in the crowd sang out. Lucky man you, not to have to depend on street cars. The driver of the car was a young man, that is, Edward Billings Henry, judged him to be young by the only feature visible, a flexible, wide mouth with clean-shaven lips. His eyes were behind goggles, and a cap covered his forehead and ears, meeting the tip of a high collar, which effectually concealed his chin but the mouth smiled as the goggles turned toward the pavement, the owner answering lightly. Hello yourself, Dick. Jump in and try my luck. Where are you going? Up to Congress Square. Well, get along then, returned the other. That's no good to me. 
Congress Square. What luck! Exactly where Edward Billings Henry wished to go. And here was a rapid transit vehicle with room enough for ten such diminutive persons as he. Without loss of time, he limped up on his aching stone toe and jogged the arm of the driver. Junius looked down at the boy. Edward Billings Henry removed a man's derby from his head and looked out of eyes kindling with hope as he asked eagerly, Do you suppose you could get me up there inside of 25 minutes, mister? What do you mean? Junius stared hard through his goggles. To Congress Square, said Edward Billings Henry impatiently. It's business, and if I don't get there, I'm out of a job, that's all. The boy mounted the step and clung to the seat, proffering his nickel. I'll pay just what I'd pay on the car, he argued. So you'd be making some money as well as giving me a lift. The goggled eyes looked at the nickel and the dirty hand and then traveled up and down the small figure back of the hand. The eyes noticed that while those parts of the boy's anatomy, which had been exposed all the morning to the city dirt, had collected grime, the rims, as it were, of the exposed parts revealed hidden cleanliness. Congress Square is an awful way up, urged Edward Billings Henry, and we mustn't waste much time, for I would like to get that job. The small hand extended the nickel, enticingly toward the glove. You'll be earning as much as a streetcar by giving me a lift, the boy repeated. <laughs> the driver's lips twisted a bit. That's so, he said. Huh, he chuckled and graciously extended his hand for the nickel. Get in, my man, and I'll give you the lift. Edward Billings Henry drew a deep sigh of relief dropped the coin into the other's palm and engulfed himself in the soft front seat. Whom have I the honor of giving a lift? asked Junius, formally, dropping the nickel into a pocket where it lay alone. After it, he sent a curious, lingering smile. Edward Billings Henry Jr., replied the boy. The lips beneath the goggles smiled. And where am I lifting you to, may I also ask, Edward Billings? To Mr. Florence's office, where they're going to select an office boy this morning, between 10 and 11. The driver busied himself a moment with the steering gear as the car passed the crowded mail wagons behind the post office building. Then he turned and shot a curious glance at his small companion, asking abruptly, And you think he'll get the job, do you? Edward Billings Henry leaned forward as if he could push the machine into a yet faster pace. I can try for it, he replied. Father says you never know what you can do unless you try. He's always wanting me to try. Yes, muttered Junius, still more interested. Fathers seem much alike, whether they live uptown or downtown. Can't we go faster, asked Edward Billings Henry sitting on the edge of his, the seat. Junius shook his head. Too many blue coats around. But about that job now, you'll not be the only boy after it. There'll, there will probably be dozens older. I'm 11 if I am small, interrupted the boy. And stronger. The boy stretched out a thin arm defiantly. <laughs> and closed his fist. Just feel, he cried, I've got a good muscle, and on my legs it's better yet. Just now I've got a stone bruise on my big toe, but I tell you, I can get round pretty fast just the same. I don't believe Mr. Florence would ever be sorry he took me. Yes, I'm inclined to believe that myself, mused the man. But how are you going to make him believe that in the beginning? <laughs> the boy raised his lame foot and gently rubbed the swollen big toe. Well, he began, I'm going to talk up big. Father says you have to sometimes when nobody's around to do it for you. And he says it's all right if you do afterward just as big as you talk. The driver wagged his head wisely. 
That's sound business sense, he agreed gravely. You intend to deliver the same goods that you sell? Let's hear what you have to say. Well, if you get me there in time to say anything, I'm going to tell Mr. Florence that father went to school a lot when he was young. He went through high school and got all ready to go through college. Edward Billings emphasized his verbs as if going through was solely a physical exercise on the flying wedge order, and Junius chuckled. Then I'll tell him that father stood almost at the head of his class in high school, and he, <laughs> and he almost took a lot of honors. Well, assented Junius, that almost is a step farther than some of the rest of us got. Yes, exulted the boy. I guess Mr. Florence will say so, too. Then I'll tell him that father taught a lot when he couldn't go through college. What next? inquired Junius. They were approaching 12th Street now, and the car was hardly moving in the press of vehicles. Edward Billings curled his bare toes under and, con and unconsciously pushed forward with all his slender might. Then I'll tell him that father used to read a lot, law books and things, same as he does. But see here, interrupted Junius, all this talk will be about your father. What are you going to say about yourself? A cloud overspread Edward Billings' face. He raised a pair of troubled eyes to his questioner. Why, I never stopped to think of that, he began slowly, all the brightness fading out of his tone. <laughs> There's nothing much to say about me. I sell papers and help father. What does your father do? asked Junius. The boy hesitated. His face flushed, and he looked up uncertainly at the goggles. He used to teach, I told you, was the evasive answer, until his eyes gave out. And now, Edward Billings Henry wriggled about on the padded leather. He always had bad legs, the evasion continued, but his arms and back are strong, and his legs all right to stand on. Yes, insisted Junius, and waited. So he's doing something he ain't going to do if I can get this job. Then I could sell papers after and before office hours and earn a lot of money. Edward Billings Henry talked rapidly, but the young man beside him was not to be turned from his purpose. Then what is he not going to do? The boy hesitated again. Father takes in washing, he finally burst out, proudly defiant. And I help him, and we do it good, I tell you. No one ever complains. Father says if you can't do what you want to, you can try something else. And that was all he could do, so he tried and found out he could wash an iron good and a lot of it. <laughs> Junius considerately looked straight ahead of him not wishing to add to the embarrassment of Edward, Edward Billings Henry, Jr. But he could not resist asking, Are you going to tell this to Mr. Florence? No, sirree, responded the boy proudly. Father ain't going to do washings any longer if I can get the job. The car entered Congress Square drew up in front of an imposing stone building, and stopped. The driver removed his goggles and turned a pair of ple pleasant gray eyes on the boy. Well, Edward Billings, here we are, and you've got the job all right. <laughs> Can you come in the morning? Edward Billings Henry nearly fell off the seat. Well, what? he stammered. The job is yours, smiled the young man. I happen to be that same Mr. Florence, who you have assured me will never regret employing you. My office is on the second floor here. I did advertise for a boy, but had totally forgotten it. He gave a short laugh. Report in the morning, please, and we'll see about a suit 
and some shoes and that stone bruised toe. Out of the automobile, Edward Billings Henry tumbled in a dazed condition and stood beside his new employer, looking up speechlessly. I'll advance you a car fare on your salary, the young man continued. He carefully avoided the pocket where lay the nickel previously owned by his passenger and produced the change. And, Edward Billings, just tell your father from me that his maxims work out so well that I'm thinking of adopting them myself. <laughs> That's a pretty good story. Thank you. Catch you next time.